Right, hello everyone. Harry's twisting on about traffic and stuff, uh, but that's going in one ear out the other because we are amongst uh, the villains, I would say, but Newcastle United have came away, Harry, with an astonishing, because considering Villa's record, we will talk about that, 3-1 away win tonight, a performance like last season tonight. This is the last word. Yeah, sadly, no Johnny here to shoot off. He's just had a lot with... Uh, but yeah, with loads of people, Sully's, big shout out to them, Chris who's here, Mark from the Facebook page, but I'm joined by Harry. Um, well, well, no, let's go straight away, what's your emotions straight away, Harry? Oh, absolutely buzzing. Um, to be here for a, for at a ground where we haven't felt like this in over 10 years mm. is unbelievable, because the last time we won here was 2013. <laughs> it's incredible. And uh, their record as well, by the way. Is, is it something yeah. like 14 well, out of well, 16? Let's be honest, right? First time they've lost in the Premier League at home all season. Wow. So, <laughs> speaks for itself, really. It's it's unbelievable. It's something that no other Premier League team has done this season. It's <laughs> what an incredible game that was. Yeah, quite incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let's get, let's bring up the lineup. I mean, there was some speculation with Miggy. Uh, I do want to talk about him towards later on, but um, he was on the bench and effectively it was unchanged side. But um, can't really grumble against that, really, can you? No, as, as you maybe say, um, I was a bit surprised Miggy didn't start, just because I thought Murphy coming back from injury couldn't play two games in four days or whatever. But, yeah, you, you can't grumble about that. It's, it's as, as expected, really, yeah. Yeah, and obviously we've, I've talked about that on the, on the, when I was driving down to put the video out earlier, the injury shouldn't be that far away with the likes of um, Harvey Barnes, Joe Willock and Callum Wilson, but we've seen Isaac go off as well. And I, before we get into the game, we'll just talk about his injury. Um, hopefully that's not too serious because if that means if he's out and you don't know what you get with Wilson, whether he's going to be fit all season or not, you don't really want to rely on Anthony Gordon, do you? Uh, no, obviously not. Um, I couldn't really tell what happened with Isaac because it was, I was quite flat, um, quite, I had quite a flat view. So, um, yeah, but obviously, fingers crossed, Wilson's back for the weekend. Eddie Howe said he was out for between four to five weeks, I think he said, this week. So, fingers crossed he's back for the weekend. And then, yeah, you don't want to be relying on playing three wingers up top all season like we did tonight, Gordon, Miggy and, um, and Murphy, uh, especially when they cannot keep fit between themselves. So, yeah, we need, we need at least Wilson fit and then hopefully his act injury is not too bad. Let's get into it. Um, looking at the stats, I mean, I think, I think, and I'm going to just bypass the goals out, but it was something like the half an hour mark, we had nine shots. Uh, the, the one thing that Villa probably do get right is they give you the highlights of the opposition team, which is rare, so we can actually see everything back, so we'll, we don't need to witness everything back. But we had something like nine shots and they had one. But were you surprised in the opening first 15, 20 minutes how comfortable we looked? A little bit. I thought I thought it was fairly even in terms of the way the game was playing out, but Villa just couldn't get a shot away. They, 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 a lot of pretty possession around the box. A couple of times it went through to Diaby and he tried to square it, but they just couldn't get a shot off. Whereas we just we did just look comfortable, as you say, a lot better than um, Fulham on Saturday, where where we just didn't look like ourselves. Whereas today it was a, a much more comf comfortable, much more regular display much more high pressing and you know just comfortable on the ball I, I, yeah i was a little i was a little bit surprised especially given how we played on saturday i talk about the goal the first one because it's a goal it's a corner <laughs> i still haven't shifted my golf excuse me corner comes in from the right hand side and it's kind of like a it's like a duck teller isn't it you, you kind of you could you could have volleyed it to be honest with you but uh, you like you ducks down and it goes to the bottom corner we didn't quite see because it's a little bit the other end of the ground from where we are but it's Fabian Shea, and he, to be honest, he had a horrendous game here last season when we got tortured by Villa 3-0. He was probably the worst player on the pitch, but my God, he's content of a man of the match. But 1-0 up, absolute limbs. Oh, it was absolutely incredible. Like, here, there and everywhere, you've got people below you, people next to everyone's grabbing each other. It's absolutely incredible. Like, I didn't even, I didn't even realise the ball had gone in, buried in the bottom corner. And then everyone, everyone's just gone mental. It's, there's no better emotion than scoring away from home to go one 0 up. And like, yeah, you yeah. fear, fear, fear for your life, haven't you? Oh, you do. You do. But let's talk about that second. The second one was a bit slow mo for me because it was like I, I can't remember. How it was I think, I think it went through to Isaac, and he was, it was like, like he was one on one, one and then is he going to score? And then it, yeah, it comes off the woodwork. Yeah. Then Where's the ball gone? Who's who's on the end of it? 
and then did Cher hit the bar and then it? But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I think Cher just slot. I think Cher slotted it in low. But originally we all, we, me and um, Chris Carls, but I thought it was actually Longstaff at first. That's what I thought as well. I thought Longstaff yeah. scored. Yeah, I was like, who scored that? And then said Fabian Cher. I was like, bloody hell, he might get a hat trick tonight. Well, he nearly did, did he? Second half, but it's Fabian Cher again. And obviously we didn't really see until the, until the announcer come on. Fabian Cher has got two, and Newcastle are two 0 up away from home. And in all honesty. They didn't look out of place for me. Obviously, it was it was pretty comfortable that afternoon. I wouldn't say afternoon, evening for Newcastle, and a couple of chances either side from. But you know, clinical Newcastle were just going for it and going for it. And obviously, I've, I do think losing Isaac stopped a little bit of momentum up top. But we'll have talked about his injury, and hopefully, uh, it's not too serious. Probably no more in the next few days. But we're going half time, and you're thinking, right, come out the second half. Just, just keep it, just keep it as it is. But we scored pretty quick in, in, in that second half. Yeah, again, we got, well, this time we caught him out on the counter attack, didn't we? Miggy down the left. Um, who I think, I think he does look better down the left. It's difficult with a Gordon, obviously, because Gordon's a far better player on that left hand side. Yeah. But he threatened down the left, put that ball into the box, and I think it was an own goal by Moreno. That's, that's what I said because I said to Chris was like, I think Murphy's trying to claim it but from what I've seen on the replay it doesn't actually go it comes back across and I tell you what there was no announcement for that so it, it almost definitely was an own goal because they wouldn't announce an own goal um, but yeah it was great great, great 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 play and 3 nil up you're in dreamland like couldn't believe it I think it, um, someone kissed me on the head in the crowd it was that kind of euphoria just, just absolutely mental um, and yeah it's crazy like who goes 3-0 up away at Villa Park not not many teams I can tell you that hardly any in the past couple of years especially with Unai Emery what did you make of um, Jacob Murphy making a, a point that look it was Miggy I don't know if you've seen that celebration when they come over he was pointing look at Miggy in the point was that a sign of that the rumours of him moving to Saudi Arabia were maybe true or is he unsettled because do you buy that he was ill on the weekend because I don't I, d I don't think he was ill listen I think I think Newcastle want to sell him I think that's the case rather than him wanting to go he obviously doesn't want to go anywhere because uh, apparently he's had the opportunity to go and he's turned it down blah blah, blah. read what believe whatever you want to believe but Murphy's like that anyway. We've seen last season with Isaac's assist at Everton, although it was a highly different situation, Murphy's always eager to spread the praise. Um, but I think there was a bit of that. There was probably a bit of that involved where Miggy, Miggy does get a lot of stick from the fans, let's be honest. So why shouldn't he be praised when he's basically set up, set up a goal, which would have been a tap-in if, if not an own goal? He deserves he deserves the praise that he got for that, and I, th I thought he, he played well coming off the bench tonight. Um, so yeah, fair play fair play to Miggy, and I, I think fair enough to Murphy as well. As I say, he likes to spread the praise. He, he he doesn't like to take too much credit, and he loves to take the piss as well. Jacob Murphy, which which he did later, which he did later when the ball <laughs> went out of play. Did you see where he went? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not getting past us today. No, that was hilarious towards the end. But um, yeah. Um, Look, Miggy has his critics. There's one or two in our WhatsApp group. I won't name them. Me and you, me and you know who they are. Um, who don't really rate Miggy, but look, uh, look, we're three nil up, and that, because of his unselfishness, Newcastle um, went and uh, scored um, the third. We've got a Villa fan not very, not very happy in front of us there. Just booing us. That was very strange. But um, see well, you later. You look neutral, lad, Devon. We'll, we we'll soon change that. <laughs> but I can get my jacket up. Look. Um, we expected at some point being 3 0 up, there'll be an onslaught. But it was a case of um, can Villa, you know, come and get themselves back in the game. And obviously, they got one back, which kind of, I don't want to say lit the atmosphere out because the atmosphere at night from the home end, by the way, it oh, was appalling, wasn't it? It was absolutely terrible. They didn't sing out in the first half. And it took them a goal to get them, get them alive. Like, and then they went quiet again. Yeah, yeah, they did. But I cannot lie, I was, I was frightened as soon as, as soon as Watkins went through that second time, I was like, I thought it was three two, and then the longer VAR goes on, it's like, the, the more you think the referees got it wrong. In which case, it would have been three two. I was very concerned, but thank God, thank God, we didn't we didn't concede a, a second. It was a long way, it wasn't for that VAR that second goal because if that goes in. Squeaky bum time with yeah. 15, 15 minutes left or so, whatever it was. And there was nine minutes, nine minutes. I mean, 
the amazement of nine minutes going and we were like, what? But well, yeah, I'd... thankfully, it must have been close because they looked at it for such a long time. It must, it must have been really close, but thankfully, you know, and obviously um, Dubravka, I think earlier on, was forced to Palmer one out wide and at one stage he looked injured as well thought, oh, carry I, think I think that's where they got the nine minutes from for it for Dubravka going down at the start of the half I think Aye. Well, we, might, we might have seen Lawrence Carries came on who knows but look we hung on and great scenes at the end and it's you know what it is we've got a lot of home and away games and it's been a little bit it's probably if you take the Fulham and Sunderland game out, we haven't really had much a shout out. Well, exactly. Well, you know what, right? And this is this is from the heart. This um, I've been to what like nine or ten away games this season. I've seen us win twice. Man United and today, and and you, I'm sure everyone watching this video knows how many games we've lost on the road this season. It's um, our away record is shocking. Oh, it's terrible. We we only win in the cups and even then. Not anymore, Harry. Well, exactly. And even well, yeah, buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. No one wins here, but little old Newcastle have so <laughs> absolutely fucking buzzing. It is. It's, it's a hell of a. It's a hell of a result because I was listening to talk sport on the way down. They're saying this is the game of the night and what have you. And look, it was absolutely fantastic for Newcastle to come here and not just win ugly, put on a performance as well, which is just you know we've been waiting for this moment and you know we can't really say oh Newcastle have got uh, too many injuries and oh we've got a game every three days and. Because yesterday is probably a big team. They've won the Texaco Cup. Villa haven't. Yeah, but you haven't won nothing since 1995. 3-1. Keep walking. 3-1. 3-1. Zero points. Bitter. Bitter. I can't stand Aston Villa fans. I f can I just get this off my chest? That's a bit of staff. Never mind fans. That's staff, is it? He had I, a bad job. I cannot stand Aston Villa. And a fuck it, I'm getting off my chest, Harry. I'll say it quietly because we'll probably get done in. Sam, obviously he lives with his missus, who's a Villa fan. Carl and Chris, who come to the, come to the home and away. They all brought up around Redditch, Villa, Villa fans. I, I always remember putting the signs up, Ant in the deck, who's your messiah when we got relegated. I was devastated. The, the Henry Lands we carry on, the championship. I remember them. We will play you every week. Six points this season off you. Eight We've goals. Done the double over Aston Villa. It's wonderful. Yeah. I'll be getting on Twitter as I walk back to my car to give a message to Villa View. I think I might enjoy that. I might enjoy that. Villa but, Watch. Uh, Villa Watch. Villa Watch. Oh, no, oh, he'll be having his worst night in a long time tonight. Well, he's a Mac and anyway, isn't he? But Villa Watch, not Villa View. But look, um, let's hear from Eddie Howe. Yeah, well, it, it sort of mixed emotions for me because I look at that team there tonight and the way we played, and I think that's a, a, an elite team, a team that's capable of achieving great things. Um, and sort of uh, the mixed emotion part is that we haven't seen that for a number of weeks, and it's been a really challenging period for us, a number of injuries. The team's looks disjointed. Today we look much more like ourselves. We had players that had been injured have come back and had a, a bit of game time now, and I think that's showing in their performances. So uh, I was really pleased with today. Well, our game plan was to really be aggressive um, and to try and stop their rhythm. And I thought we really did that in the first half. Mm. Um, and also to use our pace on um, transitions and in behind, uh, knowing that Aston Villa play quite a high line. So we were looking to, to try and deliver that. And I thought the players executed it brilliantly. Um, second half was slightly different once they got the goal and then nearly a second goal with the, the offside. We had to adjust our, our plan, uh, but the players saw the game out really well. We know every game is so, so tough. Um, so yes, of course, we hope to use this as a springboard to get back to our very best levels consistently, um, home and home or away. We want to be the same team. Um, really, the, the the disappointment today is Alex, um, but hopefully with players coming back not too far away, hopefully that won't knock us too much. Yeah, we don't really know. I mean, it, it doesn't look too serious. Looks like a slight groin issue, um, but uh, fingers crossed we're getting back quickly. So that was Eddie Howe, unlike our the Aston Villa club staff. He's not bitter. He's absolutely over the moon, and of course, he's keeping his head uh, on level shoulders, but good week, hadn't it, uh, for Newcastle, I mean, two away days, comfortable, well, comfortable tonight, the result looks comfortable on, on the weekend, but you can't really ask for two more, you've kept, you know, one, you've only conceded one goal and you've scored several, and it's too great, it's too, it's a great week, isn't it? Oh, it is, like, Fulham, I've, I've touched on before, it wasn't a comfortable performance at all, and the, that first half was shaky as anything that we've Maybe not as anything we've seen this season, but most performances we've seen this season. Um, 
You happy with it? You can't ask for much more. You you get through to the next round. I, I, I'm sure you are about to ask me if I'm happy with Blackburn. Yeah. Very happy Blackburn won, first of all. So That's I right next maybe, to you. I can maybe get a ticket. Um, you can just drive slightly up the M6 and you're there. <laughs> exactly. Um, and But yeah, no, it, it, good draw. Good draw away from home, which I don't mind. I'd rather be at home, but away, don't mind. Especially Blackburn. Um, very glad that they beat Wrexham because I think that is a banana skin and it's the kind of thing that we do slip up on. Um, and yeah, today today's result was fantastic. You cannot ask for much more from the last two games and, the, and that FA Cup draw. I really, really don't think you can. Yeah, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. But yeah, Blackburn away and they'll probably have six or 7,000 in that Darwin end, which is brilliant, so a lot more fans can go. Question for you. You're probably going to say Paris is the home performance of the season. This quite clearly is the best away performance. How close is this to Paris? Um, close second? Yeah, I, I don't think it's too close just because Paris blew everyone away in terms of first Champions League game, yeah. the high pressing, everything, Mbappe, you know. There were so many positives about that. Fabian Scher scoring a screamer in stoppage time. Like, there were so many. Tonight was brilliant, don't get me wrong. And it's something that no one else has done this season. But it doesn't carry the same way as winning the first game back in 20 years in the Champions League and smashing them. Like, we made, all right, this we got knocked out in the groups, whatever. This is better but than the 5-1, isn't it? That we beat them earlier in the season. Um, yeah, yeah, comfortably, yeah. Yeah, okay. and I want to also say I totally forgot about Fabian Shea by the way because he nearly scored a hat trick tonight. He had a chance late on that second half, and that would have been a quiz question for everybody. But who was the last defender to score a hat trick for Newcastle? Oh, probably before I was born. Less the cheek, less the cheek. <laughs> but let me know if you if you if you know that. Get get it yourselves onto Google. We'll pin it if you know the answer. Competitively, anyways. Uh, unbelievable performance. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, there's a few standouts. Um, for, I've got to be biased, and Fabian shares my man of the match. Is anyone else for you? Um, I think everyone was brilliant to a team. Trippier yeah, again, good yeah, as well. Trippier was good. Bruno was brilliant. Um, but you've got to give it to Fabian Cher. Yeah. You, you have to. There's no, there's no choice really. And we play Luton, who looks like they've just. Well, last time I checked, I they were they were smashing Brighton four 0 last time yeah, I checked. They were four 0 up. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. So there we go, Let, let's roll it on, mate. Someone's ringing me on my phone, but yeah, that's it from me and Harry down in Booby Goop. Um, we've got bit of fans, Villa fans all around us, but we're going to enjoy the moment walking back to our cars. <sighs> See you, everyone. Bye bye.